that brass punch there, it's, it's very handy. It won't mar up the, uh, the inside of that axle at all. So I'll leave some links down in the uh, description box for uh, some of these tools I'm using if you're thinking about doing this yourself. that's in there. Replacing everything, so the uh, the measurements are going to be a little different. But sometimes you can get away with just using that that shim that's in there. It's good enough. So yeah, you can use the press and you know a bearing splitter to get that piece of the bearing off. But uh, it's just as easy just to use the air hammer or have it out. So the video is going to get a little bit um, out of order a little bit, and right here, uh, this is actually the tool that's going to help you figure out the pinion depth and what shim to actually use um, on the pinion. Um, it's a pretty it's a pretty confusing tool to use. There's a lot of math involved, and if I was to sit here and show you how to figure out how to get this uh, pinion shim, the video would probably be about two hours long. So I'm going to have to kind of skip through it. One fifty three. And uh, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to find pinion depth, how to get that shim. So I'm gonna kind of skip over this a little bit. We gotta subtract. But in the end, what I end up doing is I end up using, I end up finding out that the factory shim that I have is a couple thousandths too thin, and I need a need a thicker one. All right, so this is the, the uh, limited slip carrier I got out of the backyard. And uh, I'm gonna go and pull off the ring gear and the bolts are actually reverse threads. So you're gonna tighten them to get them off. to get the, the ring gear off. Some people heat it up to get it off. Some people do what I'm doing there with the hammer. And ultimately I just go right back to the air hammer. process it actually it actually took me uh, a couple days to do all this um, you know uh, doing it in the garage on the floor it's it's pretty tiring taking my time and trying to record it, it actually took me a couple days um, I mean the labor the, around probably you know, about six hours but I broke it up into a couple days I'm 
cut off those bearings. They sell a really expensive uh, tool that will just pull all these bearings off. It's like a clamshell puller and an installer. It'll make this job a lot easier, but it's pretty expensive. I'll leave a link for it down in the description box so you can check that out. But it'll make things considerably quicker. You won't have to sit here and grind on everything like that. I'll actually pull the bearings off. And uh, you're just going to end up using like an impact. It's basically like a bearing puller, but it grabs those bearings. Okay, so this is uh, my Harbor Freight press here, and uh, it actually works pretty well. Um, pretty happy with it so far. I've definitely got my money's worth out of it. If you don't have access to a press, you can always, you know, pull all your bearings off and have your bearings ready, and uh, you can actually take it down to a shop, and, and they'll press your bearings on. It really won't cost you very much because it's really not hard to do. It's something they probably do uh, on a weekly basis. Is press the bearings. So you can always take it somewhere if you don't want to do it. Yeah, you're going to want to use uh, your old, old races. It will help you press these bearings in without tearing them up. And, and just a little little uh, little shit talking, I guess. It's a lot of shit talking about that, that LSD, that factory LSD right there. But uh, I've been running it in the Jeep for a couple months now. So I, have re I have originally recorded this this video in the winter and uh, did all the work in the winter. And right now I'm in the, it's the middle of the summer when I'm actually doing all the editing. And I've been driving it, I've had it off-road, and uh, it, it works really, really well. I mean, I didn't rebuild it or anything. Um, I'm pretty surprised, I'm pretty happy with uh, its performance. Especially for what I use it for. I don't I do not do much rock crawling. I don't do any rock crawling, because there's no rocks for, for where I live. But uh, just going out and having some fun in the mud, and in the beach, and in the water. And, you know, it, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the best 60 bucks I've spent on that Jeep. Yeah, so you see me using that race right there. You, you kind of have to use that old race to push on the bearing, on a certain part of the bearing where it won't tear up the bearing. So, and I'm running through a bunch of different size sockets and things like that. Because the, you know, the press won't really go down so far. But I do have a review video on that press right there. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, sure, pretty much show you how to put it together. Uh, I think I got it for $120. It's, it's absolutely worth the money if you're thinking about doing any type of bearing work. Um, well, I've done lower control arms on one of my other cars with it, and it, it, it works good. And there, you know, while I'm pressing it on, I'm spinning the bearing to make sure it's not binding up at all and it's going on all right. Same thing with the pinion, I use an old race. Race to race. Yeah, the new bearing there, and you can just press the bearing down onto it. You might want to lube it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier where it won't, it won't pop on you. 
you're pressing it down in there. I'm really my only gripe with that press is those, those plates right there, they're really slick. They like to move around and they're real slippery. And there's a, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube on what to do with those those plates. I've been thinking about uh, like texturing them or sanding them down so they don't move as much. But they definitely do the job. And then just <laughs> make sure you have your pinion shim in there before you go press that out. Because once you press it on there, it's on there, you're going to have to pull it back off. If you don't have the pull, you're going to end up cutting it off. And you're going to have to get a new bearing. A little bit of red lock type. Actually came with the bearing kit. And again, sometimes some you know some people like to heat up those those ring gears. They actually like to put those uh, carriers in the, in the freezer to get things to uh, line up a little bit easier. Some of your Ford rear ends, uh, you, you might want to do that, or some of your bigger Dodge trucks. But this one's small enough to where you can just pretty much pull it. I'm not I'm not too worried about it. And a lot of people talk about it, it might warp. It might warp. Um, some people like to file down that back side of the ring gear and make sure it's straight. I didn't do it. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, so these guys are reverse thread again. So you're actually going to back them out to tighten them up. And then you're going to go ahead and torque it down in a uh, crisscross pattern. Okay, and the torque spec on those guys are 70 foot pounds. And I pretty much do it in increments. Uh, I don't go balls to the wall, 75 foot pounds right away. Kind of work my way up there. Yeah, you got to stick the uh, you know the carrier in a vise. You won't be able to just hold it. You can't get a buddy to hold it. You're gonna have to stick it in a vise. You can see my vise right there. It's, it's moving around. I got a pretty cheap shit vise, but um, you're gonna have to put it in a vise.